Since PC became my primary platform in 2015, I've used a fair number of keyboards. I started off with an old Cherry MX Blue Razer Black Widow, then quickly switched to an MX Brown Corsair K70 RGB. I ended up having a really bad time with that board, so about a year after, I went back to using another MX Blue board, this time a WASD with fancy PBT keycaps, before finally landing on my current board of choice, a Topre Realforce. For a while, I wanted to check out a Cherry MX Red board, the only one of the main three switches I hadn't used, and I figured that since it's a gaming switch, it would make the most sense to get a more mainstream gaming keyboard, a product segment that I haven't interacted with since 2015. So that's where this review is coming from, mostly out of curiosity and a desire to have a more well-rounded baseline perspective on key switches before I attempt to review more obscure stuff like Topre. While it can now be found for around $100, this board has an MSRP of $130. If you're deep into the world of super high-end keyboards, that's pretty cheap, but back on planet Earth, it's a decent chunk of money for a keyboard, and for most of the people buying this, it's probably the first time they've ever spent this much on a keyboard. Thankfully, Cooler Master seems to recognize this, as they've clearly put some effort into making it a pleasant experience from the second you open the box. My box is beat up because it was inexplicably shipped inside of a bubble wrap mailer and then abused by FedEx for good measure, but inside, we find the board wrapped in a cute fabric bag that could be used for either transportation or storage if you so desired. Also included are PBT keycaps for frequently used keys like WASD, a keycap puller, a wrist rest, and a braided cable to connect the keyboard to your PC. Moving on to the keyboard itself, with the materials and build quality, I think Cooler Master have done a good job for the price point. It's pleasant to look at, everything feels nice, and there's no outrageous or try-hard design elements. Everything is sensible and standard. Much like the Corsair K-series, or really most gaming keyboards these days, it's using this exposed, floating switch design. Aside from the obvious visual benefits of allowing the RGB lighting to shine more freely, it also makes it much easier to clean. Those switches sit on top of a brushed aluminum plate, which gives the entire board a solid premium feel that is free of flex or creaking, despite the rest of the exterior housing being made of plastic. The keycaps are ABS, which is what you're going to see in this price point, and they're perfectly fine for this board. I appreciate that Cooler Master were able to show some restraint and use a normal, inoffensive font, instead of some of the hideous gamer-looking ones you find from other brands. Another positive here is that the key layout is completely standard, no weird bottom row like Corsair, so if you ever want to replace the keycaps in the future, you have the freedom to do so. The only thing I don't like about the build is the front panel that's made of glossy plastic. Mine is already covered in scratches and fingerprints. Thankfully, it can be covered by the optional wrist rest, which for me has remained permanently affixed to the board since I started using it. Due to the keycaps sitting kind of high and the end of the board being a sheer cliff, that wrist rest is pretty much mandatory, so it's a good thing that it's comfortable and of equal quality to the board itself. After a few months of use, there is some significant visual wear on the surface, but I can't feel it while using it. However, I do wish that the magnets that attach it to the board were a bit stronger. Moving on to the bottom, we see four rubber feet which do their job well, and the back two double as lifts if that's your thing. Additionally, Cooler Master were kind enough to not only make the cable removable, but to also make it USB Type-C on the keyboard end. We also get three different ways to route the cable. Then there's the form factor. This specific model is a 10 keyless board, and I find that to be the optimal layout. The removal of the number pad significantly shortens the width, and this allows for a more comfortable distance between your left and right hand while playing games, but it's also not so small that you lose things like the function and arrow keys. Personally, I like to tilt the keyboard slightly when I play to make even more room for the mouse, which is a lot easier with a smaller board. If you're an accountant or have some really specific use case in mind for the number pad, then by all means, go ahead and get a full-size board, but on a gaming keyboard, which is hopefully being used by gamers, I would definitely recommend the 10 keyless for its superior ergonomics. Likely due to its smaller size, this board doesn't get dedicated keys to control media or RGB, but there are numerous hotkeys that are easy to use and get the job done. 
While I'm on the topic, the RGB implementation here is about what you'd expect from Cherry RGB switches. And there's some accents on the sides. The lighting can be controlled from Cooler Master's software, or rather interestingly, directly from the keyboard without software via hotkeys. Finally, we get to the switches. This keyboard comes in the three most popular Cherry MX flavors, red, blue, and brown. As I've mentioned, mine is red, which is a linear switch, meaning that it has no click or tactile bump. Red has a reputation for being the go-to switch for gamers, and after playing with this keyboard, I understand why. They actuate very easily, making them less fatiguing for prolonged, rapid use, yet they also feel sharp enough as to not make inputs vague. For typing though, they're not my favorite, but that's not to say that they're horrible either. They definitely have a learning curve, since they're so light it's easy to accidentally hit a key or slur the letters and words together, so I have to slow myself down from time to time. I certainly got used to it after a while, I wrote this entire review with them without major issues, and for Discord chatting or even some homework, they're totally fine, but they are not set up for hardcore typing. Now I'll let you have a listen to some gaming and some typing. The audio was significantly boosted here for the purposes of this video, but in person, the keyboard is reasonably quiet. Since the switches aren't clicky or tactile, the main source of noise comes from bottoming out, so if you're slamming on them in the heat of a game, they may become loud enough at times to be picked up by your microphone. In comparison, blues are clicky, tactile, and require more force to actuate. They're generally considered to be the typing switch, and while you can absolutely game with them, compared to reds, they are undoubtedly more fatiguing, and after long periods of use, I find that my fingers get stuck in the mire of them, almost like I'm losing my sharpness over time. Also, they're extremely obnoxiously loud. Definitely don't recommend them to anyone whose primary use is gaming. Then there's brown, tactile but not clicky. On paper, you'd be inclined to think that this is the best of the three, but after over a year of using them exclusively, I found them to be... just not good. They feel extremely inconsistent and vague, which is weird since they have a bump, but from what I remember, they feel less sharp and defined than the reds on this board. I would describe the travel feel as scratchy, maybe sandy, and while they're not as fatiguing to use for long game sessions, they're not pleasant. Anyway, I do not recommend browns to anyone. All this being said, switch preference is completely subjective. I actually had a friend that was interested in getting a new keyboard, so I recommended this one with the red switches. He ended up going to Best Buy and testing out other boards with cherry switches and decided to get it with blues instead. I think that's a brilliant idea. Even though they might not have this specific board, a lot of stores like Best Buy or Micro Center will have at least some mechanical keyboards with cherry switches on display for you to test, so if you're considering this keyboard, or any other Cherry MX board for that matter, I recommend you go do that if possible. So if you've never had a mechanical keyboard, or you're just getting into PC gaming, I think this is an excellent choice. This is basically everything you want in a gaming keyboard and nothing you don't. At the $130 MSRP, I think it's worth its price, nothing more, nothing less, but for the $100 it's currently going for on Amazon, I think you'd be doing pretty well. It's simple, practical, not relying on any gimmicks, and I think it's going to hold up very well for years to come. Not everyone is looking to deep dive into the world of keyboards, and this is a good start and endpoint if you just want something good and solid to play games and do regular day-to-day -day typing on. If you're interested in seeing more peripheral, tech, and gaming content, consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to stay up to date with my future video plans, the best way to do that would be to check out my Twitter and Discord, links to both in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching.